Hey, how is it going everyone? This is Christina and today I have a beginner level video for you again on how to choose the right camel for your ride. For those of you who are looking for actual animal creature, this is not for you. This is a software that helps you with integration. I was inspired to do this video because I have many people come to me and ask me questions like, Hey Christina, which camel project should I use for my application? And what works best? You know, those kind of questions keeps coming to me. Hey, maybe it's time to talk about different kinds of camel. Because you can see that just like in real life, camel comes in different shapes and sizes and you don't want to have a heavy application and make it running serverless. It's like picking a camel that is really good for endurance and then make it to run a sprint. It's not built for it. So in this video, I will discuss with the nature of each camel project and the pros and cons and what kind of scenarios they might fit best. But take this again with a grain of salt and always love to have your comments on what you think about each project. But this is just my opinion, just to give you a basic idea of what each project is about and guide you to a good directions and picking up the right camel for you. So that was the whole purpose of the video. I'm not telling you exactly what to do because you know your project best, you know what works best in, in your situation. So always think about it, think about the basics, actually try it out if you have the time. All right, before we duck in into the actual projects, let's take a look at what camel does. It helps you with transporting goods or contents from one endpoint to the other. So the same thing happens to the software version, but it's transforming in the digital endpoint instead of the actual physical endpoint. Camel is basically a framework that contains a bunch of libraries. By having that frameworks, including all the libraries, it helps you to create integrated solutions without reinventing the wheels every single time. It helps you to transform data into different data shapes as well as understanding where to how to get from one point to the other by speaking to its protocol and also applying different enterprise integration patterns so it can split, aggregate, or doing many other things that you typically do in integration. All right, so now we have all the base cover. Now let's take a look at the first Camel project, Camel Core. You can think of Camel Core as the base model for Camel. All the other Camel project that I will be talking about today is just an upgrade or an alien version of Camel. Basically, they all do the same thing, which is integrate. And you can also use it to plug in all the 300 components such as Salesforce, Kafka, SAP, ServiceNow, or any other public cloud services, as well as supporting industry standard data shapes and formats, and so on. We can run plain Java using the main libraries, and it takes care of most fundamental tasks in Camel, such as looking for beans in Camel registry, loggings, and just some of the common use uh, tasks that you do in Camel. However, if you're looking for a minimal version of it, you can use Camel Core Engine with only the must-have set of libraries needed. For Camel to work and deliver and transport your data from one endpoint to the other are defined by you, the developer. You can then use a camel DSL to define where you want the camel to go and how you want it, how you want your data shape to be, and camel will do that for you. You start with the, the camel framework, and in the pom file where you're gonna define all the dependencies and the extra libraries and extra camel components that you need, and on top of that, you can start writing routes. The format of the routes are defined, so all you have to do is just to extend it. And then you can, on top of that, you can also add RESTful endpoint if needed. You can also add business logic using POJOs. After that, package everything together in the POM file using Maven plugins. So if we take a closer look at the Camel project, the structure of the Camel contains, first of all, the Camel routes and it also contains the camel libraries, which are defined in your pom file. And then you would also specify um, different runtimes, such as Spring Boot, Quarkus, Keraf, or Plano Java. And then you can deploy that using the Maven plugins. Camel can run in different places, such as on your laptop, running in servers, or even running them beyond the cloud. Then we got the camel Quarkus. This one joins the pack really recently, and it's it's based on everything that was offered by the base model, the Camel Core, but with supersonic speed and it's optimized to run. One of the best features for developer is the ability to 
do live coding and it also allows you to compile your camera applications into native executable so it can even run faster everything is optimized for speed and resource utilizing this one's perfect for cloud native microservices scenario where you want it to have really lightweight application and it has to be fast it has extra libraries to provide you with interactions on kubernetes for instance it will be able to locate a lot of the content it will be able to work with configurations and it also have maven plugs in to help you even deploy since the camel quarkus is running on quarkus runtime and quarkus relies heavily on predicting your applications in build time the runtime ingestion some of the runtime injections that you're used to in the Spring Boot runtime, it might not work. So you need to actually create extensions to tell Quarkus what to do. So there are some cases where the components that you were you used to have in Camel Core, like if you're an old time Camel user, you've been using Camel for a very long time and you just want to migrate applications from Camel Core or Camel Spring Boot to Camel Quarkus, just be careful because some of them may, might not have the extension to do it, but this will be a very popular runtime for Camel, so you'll find a lot more support in that. And the next one we have is Camel Spring Boot. So this one is one of the older ones in the family, kind of started after Spring Boot got really popular and people want to have Spring Boot for the runtime. It allows you to configurations with properties. It allows you to inject a lot of things at runtime. And it has tons and tons of examples on GitHub people's blogs, even Stack Overflow. Good to know, right? So Spring Boot is a little bit heavier compared to um, Quarkus because first of all it has to do a lot of things on runtime so and it, it will require a lot more running resource for instance loading a lot more things into the memories or so it doesn't really support native executables so therefore you actually do have to have uh, JVMs running in the destination or where you want to have your applications running but it has really good support for running it locally as a standalone applications. You can also containerize it. And there are also plugs in that helps you with deploying and working with Kubernetes, although it's not as straightforward as Quarkus uh, when you do a comparison, but it has a sufficient amount of stuff that you can work with. Simply use the Camel Spring Boot dependencies in your POM file, then you would have a Camel that does everything on Spring Boot. Yeah, and um, next up is Camel Giraffe. This, this is the place where I started using Camel. Obviously learning OSGIs and um, learning how everything loads in OSGI is a bit confusing to start. But the reason why I think it's really good at the time is because it was pre-container, pre-microservices time where developers are looking for a better way to modulize their applications. So having um, OSGI helps you to modulize to a certain point to isolate a, your libraries or application that you're running in JVMs. So you can freely reload the application with several applications running on the same JVM without restarting others. So you're not breaking off others, so you're not restarting other applications while you only have a single JVM running. It was really popular at the time. If you want to have it running on a cloud environment, you can also containerize your Kiraf. But to me, that's kind of a redundant step because Kiraf is a container to me and then you have a container. So why do you want to have a container isolating containers since you can have a single JVM uh, to run your microservices. So the whole purpose of Kiraf just doesn't work for me that way. But if you are limited to um, how your company works or you're limited to how your um, operation or infrastructure, um, Kiraf is a still a very good option. And then we have Camel K. So this camel has wings. It's basically, it, it works, it, it's built based on the Camel Quarkus model using the Quarkus runtime. Therefore, it's a supersonic fast. Also with live coding. So what it comes with is the capability to run on cloud or Kubernetes natively. So it will not work without Kubernetes. Well, in some cases you can, you, uh, there's actually um, things you can do to make it run locally. But ideally, you would want to have it um, on Kubernetes. In order to make it work, you need to have operator. And this operators manage the life cycle of your Camel application. When you're writing your Camel K, um, the operator scan through your applications, figure out your dependencies, and then it's gonna locate all the configurations that you specified on Kubernetes 
finding out all the password secrets that you've set on the Kubernetes of packaging that. From the client side, you don't have to have anything installed. All you need to do is just to have a simple CLI. You can probably do that without it, but I would strongly recommend using that CLI to push your code into uh, Kubernetes and that CLI fire off and notify operators and the operators will then take care of everything and you would have a containerized instance running on Kubernetes. You can also live coding into it. So how cool is that, right? But something you need to be aware of when it comes to CamelK. Um, remember when we're talking about Camel Quarkus, Spring Boot, Camel Core, you can set up business logic in Pojos. But with Camel K, it's not designed for that. Camel K is designed for smaller integration code. Getting your Pojos loaded or getting your company's libraries loaded into Camel K will require some extra work. Camel K is for straightforward microservices like orchestration, integration. So if you still want to do a very complex business logic like applications, Camel Quarkus would be a better fit for that. And Camel K does a lot more lightweight content. So the next one is Camel Kafka Connector. It's special. It's built for people that are typically not coders, but mostly for Kafka users. The only goal of this Camel is connecting to Kafka, and that's it. It's also based on Camel Quarkus. But instead of writing Camel route, you do every configuration in the property file. This Camel is a little bit harder to do customizations since it takes away the ability for you to tell Camel what to do with DSL. You know what, it's just building things for streaming. So it's a great idea and it packages everything as a Camel Kafka instance. Last but not least, the Camlet. This one is new. I have yet to see it on the homepage of Camel. It's for people that just wants to deliver their goods across places by telling it where to go and the end result without knowing how to write Camels. Camlet comes in all shapes and sizes. It allows you to establish a running Camel applications in a decorative way. It's basically just a template. The developers of the Camlet can create templates for the users, so the users can simply enter the value of the template for it to work. Any Camel writers can create these templates using Camel DSL, and they can also play around plug and play or reassemble this template too. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna do the entire what is Camelot video because I've already done it before. If you have not watched that, please go ahead and watch my previous videos. Um, but let's focus on what I think Camelot is good for. First, every enterprise would have their own rules and specific integration needs. Camelot would be a great tool to pre-build it and then stash it away in the marketplace like repository so more juniors or citizen developers can take advantage of it by simply declare the variables and have a running camel right away in the enterprise. If you happen to need something quick and simple on the cloud with Kubernetes or OpenShift, then since Camelot is just another Camel DSL combining with the power of Camel K operators, it will make integration on the cloud for getting the data or events in and out for your cloud events, for all the serverless functions, or streaming data or events in and out of Kafka like a breeze. For the marketplace repository type of implementations, I would simply use it as a connector with simple customizations or transformations. Probably not good for orchestrations or other integration type because it might get very complex for the user to configure it and might as well just write a normal camera application because it's easier to maintain. And I'm also looking forward for a user-friendly interface since this is more declarative if we can have a more prettier interface for people to configure things in the future and that will help tremendously um, with future integration development. And that concludes my beginner's guide of choosing the right camel for your camel ride. Again, this is my own opinion on what kind of use cases is better for a certain type of camel project. Of course, there's always exceptions and I'm recording this around June, 2021. So things can change, project will change. So at the time when you're looking at this recording, it might, might not apply. So make sure you check the project status and you know, I'm happy to hear your comments and see what kind of what, what's your opinion on your use cases and what kind of project were you working on and what framework did you choose at the end. Um, so I hope this helps you and I'll see you next time. Thank you.